We carried her upstairs. She seemed totally, totally lifeless to me. Rigid. But her skin... It wasn't going cold. I asked... I asked Roderick, what's going on? My sister has always suffered from catalepsy, which is why she has always been fragile and not left the county very much, or, or indeed the house, these last few months. But... Yes, I, I do not know. It is just possible that... that no, Roderick. I, her heart, it stopped. Well, if, if she is indeed dead, then we must lay her out. Uh, it is true, we can do nothing, nothing till morning. No. Oh, my poor sister. <sighs> and we laid her out. But as I laid her out, the oil flashed up again, as if it wanted me to see something. And all I saw that her eyes had opened and they were bright but vacant and I thought to myself maybe she isn't dead they're not rhyme yet so I turned to Roderick who was closing them and I said I think I'm going to go off and see if I can find a doctor what do you say? well you could try but I I do not think you will have much luck my dear fellow and he looked out out of the room where we had laid his sister and you could see the shadows moving how do you see shadow but dark upon dark flitting like a bat in the night but bigger insubstantial and i pointed them to roderick and i said what is it about this place but all he would say was there are times when i have felt that the house was almost alive but i Try not to think about it. My forebears lived here before me and managed to live out their days, and so I hope to do so also. And we left the room. I lit up the oil bright, and we went down the stairs, and everywhere the same. That feeling, that feeling that you have sometimes in the dark, that you're being watched, that something is judging you. And I shivered. And Roderick... Roderick had remembered that he was always meant to be the hypochondriac, and now he was finding symptoms of his own. As I said, my dear fellow, I'm not feeling too well myself. He complained of leg ache and heart ache and muscle ache, brain ache, more like I thought. But I didn't say anything. Because I realised this house, I'm not sure that I would have been, I would have been as good as him if I had spent my days here. But I led him into the living room and I built up the fire and I said, I'm, I'm going to go and get help. Thank you, my dear fellow. And I gave him my book to read. <laughs> and I went out the door, meaning to drive to the nearest town. But although the moon was bright in the sky, no light had shone on the mere. Although the moon blotted out the stars, I could barely see the car. And yet there was no fog. None that you could see, only a heaviness. And as I went down the steps, I saw it. Twisting, turning into the house. That crack that had now grown. And I could swear... I could swear that it was less a crack and more a stream or even a vein with shadow blood. And I did not like to cross it. Not even though the moon was high. <laughs> I ran back into the house where Roderick smiled as if he was not that surprised, and said, I thought it might not be possible, my dear fellow, for you to get help tonight. So Sit we down. drew up by the fire, and I took up my book. 